Well, hello, friends. It is so good again to see you this week. Thank you so much for joining me, Pastor Zach, for this week's children's sermon. It's so good to be together. I know there's just a couple more weeks of summer before you head back to school, but friends, I hope that you are able to rest and relax and rejuvenate and still do that math packet or that summer reading that you might have to do because learning is good and so is resting and we get to do these things together. But as always, I want you to find that comfortable spot in your house, outside, wherever it might be. And let's take that deep breath in and deep breath out together. Ready? One, two, three, in. Hold it. And out. So obviously you can tell that I'm in my house. And there's a reason for that. But I'm not going to tell you quite yet. I'm going to read to you from Isaiah this week. That's our Old Testament lesson. It's found in the beginning part of the Bible. We're in chapter 56, and we'll read verse 1 and then 6 through 8. Let us hear God's word. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. There's an interesting word here in the scriptures, but first I have a question. Who likes to take a nap or likes to rest, maybe? Is your hand up? Maybe there were times in your life where you could take a nap. Maybe there were times in your life where you couldn't. You know, you can't really nap at school, but maybe you can nap afterwards. Sometimes you can nap in the car, maybe back from a soccer game or baseball game or a long road trip. I know growing up, you can ask my parents, I loved napping. We could go in the car ride, we could go visit family in Virginia, and I would be the first one asleep in a heartbeat right when we got into the car. And then there were times where I would come back from school, uh, I would get off the bus and I would come home and I would have to take a 30 minute nap just to refresh. Sometimes I even do that now, don't tell the adults. But sometimes it's needed. Sometimes a day can be tiring, but then there's some times where you have to stay awake, which is fine too. But here, Isaiah says something very interesting. Keep the Sabbath and hold fast my covenant. See, friends, Sabbath means rest. Sabbath means time to relax. Sabbath means time to just recenter ourselves in God's word, in love, in, in, in hope, and precisely to hold fast to the covenant. Now, what is this covenant that, you know, Isaiah might be talking about? But it's that covenant with Abraham, that the Israelites will be a blessing to many nations. That's why here we hear that God is gathering people, will gather the outcasts of Israel, will gather others to them, and besides those already gathered. And he's going to, God will bring them into this place, into his house, which interestingly is called Bethel, house of of God. And right here in this text from Isaiah, it says, for my house shall be called a house of prayer. See, by 
honoring the Sabbath and making sure that we rest and that we are made whole, that we don't run ourselves down into the dumps, run ourselves completely empty where we can't give anything else, where we can't love our neighbors, where we just maybe can't even get up to go to church. We're supposed to keep the Sabbath. We're supposed to rest. And then we're supposed to cling to the love that Christ has given us by dwelling with us and dying for us. This love from God is steadfast and is throughout all generations. And it's through that Sabbath, through that time of rest, that then we are centered and we can pray. We can pray for God's love. We can pray to be renewed and refreshed so that then we can invite others into this house of prayer, into God's house, into this this bond, this community of love, this community that we have when we are together on Sundays. We invite people into that, and it's God who gathers us together. God not just doesn't gather the people who know each other, but he gathers the outcasts. He, <clears throat> he gathers the strangers together. Friends, this is the good God that we worship, that God is constantly up to something. That God is bringing us, loving us, forgiving us, and renewing us, and making sure we rest each and every day. That's why I wanted to be here at my home. You can see it's dark outside. It's just, I'm actually recording this on Wednesday night. It's just about bedtime. It's time for that rest. It's time that we can recenter ourselves to make sure that we have the energy to to get up in the morning and to do what God has called us to do, whether that's go to work or go to school or go to camp or go to church or or whatever. God invites us to do to do life together. Because together God is making God's self known. By us being in the world, we can share love with our neighbors. We can share that grace bag that we handed out on Sunday. We can share that smile that somebody might need, or we might be able to say hello to the person who doesn't feel welcomed. There are so many ways you can make a difference. There's so many ways that you can help gather the people that God is using you, and that through rest and and sleep and making sure that we are whole, that we can pray and that we can come to the house of God, which is a house of prayer so that we can worship together and worship the God of love. Because ultimately that's what it's all about, that we proclaim that truth, that you are loved and you are enough and nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Friends, that is the good news. That's what grounds us in this, uh, in this, in this time together. Here and now, we are loved so much by God that God first loved us in Jesus. So now we get to love one another in acts of kindness and service through our words and our deeds. Friends, let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you that you call us to rest. We thank you that you invite us to pray. And we thank you that you gather us together in community. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, you might be saying this during the day, and if so, I hope you can rest. If you're watching this at night, I wish you a good night and, a, and sleep well and sweet dreams. But know always that you are held in the gracious and loving hands of our God. That you are loved and you are enough. And I hope to see you Sunday. Take good care, friends. Bye-bye.